All right, in this video, we'll introduce some animation. I want to start from scratch in this one. We'll go to web graphics, and we had our drawing basics, but I want to make a new one. Um, animation intro. And I'm just going to do a basic shape and try to animate stuff in it, um, its position, its size, color, stuff like that. All right, let's open this with code. Um, we'll just open Visual Studio Code. And then drag this folder into there. Beautiful. It's empty, so of course I need an index.html. Maybe we'll get a style sheet as well. And of course, our wonderful JavaScript, main.js. Okay, an HTML here. Um, I'm going to use the shortcut, that Emmet abbreviation. It has some stuff in here we probably don't need for what we're building, but whatever, that's fine. Okay, let's change this title to animation intro in the body here. Sure, I'll do maybe a title here as well, animation intro. And then the key to doing this graphics, right, is we need a canvas. So I'm going to have a canvas. I'll give it an ID, my canvas, just like so. Okay, um, we'll save that in the style sheet. Maybe we'll do a body text align center. And just so that I can see the canvas, well, no, we'll, well, yeah, maybe we'll do a border, one pixel solid, great. And let's go live. My go live's missing. My go live's still missing. That's okay if I right click, open with live server. Okay, there's, it says animation intro, and I definitely do not see my canvas. There's my canvas. How come it doesn't have a border? Um, whoops, let's go check my code here. Canvas, ID, slash canvas, canvas border, one pixel solid gray. Dude, this isn't good. Oh, because I didn't load my style sheet, of course. Rookie mistake, right? My styles will have no effect if I don't link them. So I have to link to style.css. And of course, hey, there we go. Now it's centered in my canvas. Has a default size. I haven't specified its size yet, but I have that border now and wonderful. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the JavaScript and I won't make the same mistake again. We have to make sure we load our JavaScript just like we linked to that style sheet. So we'll do our script tag, source equals main.js and away we go. Okay, inside of this, this I'll give it a comment for a little title, animation intro, and usually we um, set up the canvas and the context, that graphics context, all right? Graphics context. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna create a variable, CNV short for canvas, and we're gonna use our document.getElementById to select that canvas element. Right, I can then create a context variable by asking the con canvas to get a context, a 2D context. And then once I have access to this canvas variable, which is my canvas element, I can set the width here to be whatever I want. I'm going to say 800 and canvas.height 600. And if everything went well, hey, there's my 800 by 600 canvas. Beautiful. I really don't need it that big. Let's go 600 by 400, whatever you want. Okay, and then let's draw something. Let's draw, uh, I don't know what we want, a square, a circle. Let's just do a square. So I'm going to use my context to set a fill style. And maybe I want an orange square. Sure, why not? And then I'm going to draw a fill rect at somewhere. Um, maybe 100, 150 with a width of 200 and a height of 80. I just made those numbers up. All right, hey, there's my rectangle. Or, oh, I want it to be a square. So if I want it to be a square, I should make that 80 by 80. Ta-da, there's my square. Okay, so this is just, we're drawing things, but I wanted to introduce animation. So the key to animation is being able to draw things over and over again, 
right? I need to be able to draw the square and then change its location and then draw the square again and then change its location and draw the square again or change its size and draw it again. So we need to introduce some sort of a, a loop here where we're drawing. If you think of those little flip animations, right, where you flip the cards and it animates, that's basically what we want to do. We want to change what's drawn to the screen or where it's drawn to the screen, that kind of stuff. So the way that we can do that is let's put all of our drawing inside of a function. So I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call it, some people would call it draw. I'm going to call it loop. Just to really emphasize the fact that we're going to use this function to repeat over and over again. All right. And I'm going to take this drawing code inside of it. And remember, a function is just a named block of code. It kind of stores this code. And it won't actually execute this code until we tell it to run. So when I run this, I don't actually see anything because this code isn't executing because we haven't told the loop function to run. Now we can do that by just saying loop like that, but that again will only run this once. How do I know that it's only running once? If I add a little console.log hi into here, we should see that it just says hi once, right? Hi. Okay. If I want this to loop, there's a couple things I can do. Um, something we've seen before is set, uh, so like that set interval. And the set interval function basically takes in the name of a function. So I'm going to use loop. And then I give it a time in milliseconds. I'm going to go like 20, 20 milliseconds. So what this should do is it should call the loop function every 20 milliseconds. And you can see now that it's calling it every 20 milliseconds. Hi, 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 hi. If I change that to 1,000, that should be every second. One, two, three, right? Doing it every second. We want to have it at approximately a common um, rate is to do 60 frames, draw 60 times a second. So I think 20 is close to that. We do 20 milliseconds. Okay, so this will work, um, and it makes this this function repeat over and over and over again. So again, there's nothing changing because I'm re just drawing the same square in the same spot over and over and over again. That's not very exciting. What we need to do now is create some variables. So I'm going to have some global variables here and let's create a variable for rectangle X. Okay. And I'm going to initialize that right away to 100. And basically this value here represents the X value of the rectangle. So I'm going to replace that with rectangle X, right? I declared a variable. I initialized my variable. I'm now using my variable and nothing changed because rectangle X is still 100. But now I've got this power that I can uh, update my variables. I can go rectangle X is assigned rectangle X plus one, let's say. So because this function repeats over and over again, I'm going to add one and then draw it, add one, draw it, add one, draw it. And we should see that it moves now. Now, I, I wasn't expecting, well, I was kind of expecting this, but I wanted to just see this square moving and not this big, long rectangle. What's going on here? Well, the key is, is that once I draw this square, it stays there. And I move it and I draw a new square and then another new square. So we're seeing the history of all of these squares that have been drawn. An easy way to fix that is to um, draw a background um, over and over again. So each time this function runs, it'll do a clean background and draw the square at its new location. Clean background, draw the square at its new location. Um, so to draw a background, we're going to just set the fill style to be white, let's say. And then we're going to draw fill rectangle at zero, zero with canvas dot width and canvas dot height, right? And that should fill the entire canvas. And now, yay, we can see this thing moving. Okay. So right. What's happening is it's drawing a background, drawing the rectangle, changing the location of the rectangle. It draws the background, draws the rectangle, changes the location of the rectangle, draws the background, draws the rectangle, and it keeps going. Okay, and then of course we can change the speed here, right? Plus five would make it go faster. Zoom. If I wanted to go left, I could go minus one, right? And it would go to the left. If I, I could multiply it by things, but whatever. Um, 
What do I want to talk about now? Oh, we could also do um, random stuff. Math.random. Math.random gives me a value between 0 and 1. So I could times that by 5, maybe. And now it should move by like a random amount. So it kind of moves a little bit or a lot. If I times that by 10 and then subtracted 5, um, this will get me a number between 0 and 10. But then I subtract 5 should get me a number between negative 5 and 5. And you should see that it'll kind of sometimes be negative, sometimes be positive. Right? And kind of jitters back and forth. Okay, cool. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to show you quickly was let's go back to just moving plus 5. Notice here how it's not very smooth. Right? If you look really closely, it's kind of a little jittery. We don't want it to be. We want it to be consistently moving by 5. Um, part of the reason for that is just the set interval function, this 20 milliseconds. When we run it in the browser, it tries its best, but it doesn't always exactly take 20 milliseconds. Um, there's other stuff going on on the computer. Um, so there is another command that works better than set interval that's designed to kind of try to balance and make sure that this loop function is called consistently. And what we do for that, um, it doesn't work exactly the same way. We do a request animation frame, and then we give it the name of the function. Now, doing just this will unfortunately only call it once. So what we need to do inside of this function is do another request animation frame loop. So basically, this function ends up calling itself again. And then it calls itself, calls itself, calls itself. And the request animation frame is just designed for these animations. So it smooths things out and it calls things. Like you can tell already that it's, it's a lot smoother, right? Because it's trying to balance the amount of time between the drawing the frames. Okay, so this is the way I recommend. It makes it a little smoother. I've got maybe a little bit of time here. What I want to show you yet is we can actually update anything that's a number, right? So we updated rectangle X. Let's update the size of the rectangle. So let rectangle size be 80. So I declare my variable. I initialize my variable. I'm now going to make this rectangle size, and I can use that again. Why am I calling it? I'm calling it a rectangle, but technically it's a square. Whatever. Um, I'm going to use that size for the same for the width and the height, which will make it a square. And then, okay, good, it's 80. Let's slow this down for a second. Actually, let's go do the random again. Um, actually, let's show, remember there's a shorthand notation, the plus equals five to update a variable. So that still works. And instead of five, we can do that math.random times 10 minus five. And that'll get that negative five to five. And let's initialize it more in the center of the canvas. Cool. Okay, now let's also change um, the size. So in this update variable section, I'm going to go rectangle size plus equals. Maybe I'll make it grow 0 0.1. So it'll slowly get bigger. Right? So you can see that getting bigger. But it's still maintaining the square because the width and the height are growing at the same time. Okay, um, if I wanted to speed that up, right, there it goes. Again, if we wanted math.random uh, times, uh, what if I wanted times 2 minus 1? So this should give me a value from negative 5 to 5. This should give me a value from negative 1 to 1, right, because that'll be 0 to 2. And then if I subtract 1, it should be negative 1 to 1. So it'll get a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger over and over again. And I've got this random animation stuff happening. Okay, that's the basics of animation. Like I said, the key is doing this request animation frame to call this function. And this is all the code that we want to repeat over and over again. And then we need that request animation frame again down here so that it constantly calls itself over and over again. Then the variables, right? We have these variables that we can initialize. Um, and then we can use them in here to make things change. Okay. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Hopefully that makes sense. You're going to have tons of fun with this. And uh, take care and see you in the next video.